or is it a different document? Um, I would say the schedule with the parking lot. We go okay, we gotcha. discuss topics there. We can continue. With the okay, yeah. Well. All right, David, um, let's get started. Uh, Mike, we're starting with third point, safely cleaning up content repo versions. Got it. Okay, so can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I wanted to discuss a topic that we're currently dealing with, um, and this is cleaning up repo versions. Um, so let me just outline the problem and then I'll ask for questions and stuff like that. Um, so we have a backlog of, of content, um, repo versions and publications that we wanna clean up. Um, currently we set the repository on distribution. So we're distributing the latest repo version publication automatically. Um, but this issue that I saw that another user filed is what we're running into. So I can't make sure this tab is set. Okay, so they say publish here, but I think it really I think of it really as distributed. Um, so if you just if you publish a repo version and then distribute it, um, it's quite possible that if another user comes along, and makes a bunch of changes to your repository that the published repo version that's being distributed will get deleted by retained repo versions. And you can even set you know, that number really high to like 100, but if another user makes 101 changes, then your repo version that's being distributed will get deleted. So that's kind of the problem that we're running into. I'll stop there and ask for questions. Does everyone understand it? The problem? Yeah, yeah the problem so, is that. Uh, go on, Kieran. I'm struggling with one thing. So the just whether I've understood or whether my knowledge is correct. Uh, the publication, even if the repository version is deleted, the publication still works and can still serve stuff, right? It's just that you couldn't recreate it anymore. Is that true? Let me do, let's double check. So I think the publication might get deleted. Let's look. Maybe somebody knows this for sure off the top of their head. I think publication is cascade deleted. Yes, and, and I believe the distribution will be automatically set to pointing nowhere. Yeah. So distribution will survive, but it will just point to no publication anymore. I thought publications could live without their repository version, but maybe read, that's just wrong. If I read this code correctly, it says cascade, right? I don't think the publication can live on its own because publication just adds the necessary metadata, but the artifact bits are still served from the within the repo version. That's why if you remove the repo version, you need to delete the publication too, because it can't exist in a while on its own. Okay, yeah, so I think, that's I think my true. mental image was simply wrong and you've corrected it, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's true for pass-through publications, definitely, like those get served from the repo version. So yeah, that's probably why there's a cascade. So going so back the problem, to- is that you want to make sure that if a distribution is pointing to a particular publication or a repo version, that yeah. those things don't can't be deleted without yeah. you first unsetting it on the distribution or something. And, and the bad solution is to keep all repo versions forever. I'm guessing that's not the solution you're looking for because that would do it, right? Yeah, exactly. We have these versions that are years old that has have content that we want to remove. Uh, so I, I'm. I think we could look at opening a PR for this if Pulp is on board, and just have maybe a config variable or just do it by default, where the retain repo version code would exclude um, repo versions that have publications that are being distributed. And if I like delete a repo version manually, should it 
like stop me if I still distribute a publication created from that version? That's a good question. We, that's not a use case we're concerned about, but yeah, maybe. So this kind of problem we have had in Pulp for a while, and it's not just for these two objects. I'm going to paste a link in the chat. If David, you can open it. It's the case for multiple objects that have references. And you can end up in the situation where you remove one object and the other object which references loses its reference. And there has been discussion how to address it, but I don't think we ever came to any conclusion. So our problem is a little bit different because I guess so one thing is we're not setting the publication directly on distribution. So there's no fun key there. Right, we're just saying repository on distribution. But if you're referring to the publication or the yeah, the publication getting cleaned up with the repo version, then this would be applicable. I kind of feel like they're two separate problems, but I mean, if this the solution to this problem solves our problem, then we would be interested. I think I think there's like two things here. There's like the very general, how do you do this in general? What objects need to stick around when other objects depend on them? And then there's like, or the other alternative, and maybe that's the more practical approach is to go like, well, there's specific workflows where we know that specific, where you run into this issue like David did. Like, so you want to use, so it's, it's a totally reasonable thing, right? The user wants to use retain repo versions equals five or something, because I don't want to keep all repo versions forever, uh, but they don't want them, they don't want that feature to delete things that are still being distributed. Right, that's like your particular use case. And maybe it's best to just do like fix this use case by use case. So if that would be David, please open a PR for this particular workflow to make it make this combination of features work. So David, how do you see the solution for this? Like imagine you have retained version five, and it just happens so that all five are going to be distributed. And yeah, so in that case, what I think the re retain repo version code should do is should, it should gather a list of repo versions. It should exclude the ones that are being distributed. And then from the set that is left, it should delete however many above the number of retain repo versions. Yeah, but that would not <clears throat> match number five anymore. You have five repo versions which are being distributed. In the meantime, you're trying to create the sixth one, and then the hook is going to be called to delete everything except five. And if there will be this extra logic placed on top, it would need to keep six repo versions, but retain repo version will be set to five. You understand what I'm getting to? Or maybe I'm missing something, and you have a working solution already. I don't have any. No, you're not missing anything. I think you could end up in a situation where you are retaining more uh, than what you're actually setting it to. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think we would want some clarification on what the setting means, that it's like the minimum, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely not optimal. Like you can have more, like you said, repo versions than retain repo version count. So I do realize that that so, kind of is not optimal. Um, that you know maybe like a setting works. I mean the other solution is we can handle this outside of pulp maybe and clean up repo versions ourselves. Although there's not enough information that we can get from the API to know which repo versions are currently being distributed. In our case, where we're setting repo on distribution. So maybe another option is to somehow expose that information through the API. Um, let, let me say, um, I think 
first of all, deleting a version that is currently published is by, by an automatic process that is happening elsewhere is absolutely not expected. And this is source of a uh, big surprise and we should close that, I believe. Um, you said you wanted to take all the repository versions, take out the published one and then keep five, is that correct? So uh, just a point of clarification, I, um, I would like to delete uh, delete uh, published repo versions, but I don't want to delete distributed repo versions. Yes, right. So a distribution attached to publication kinds of blesses the repository version and then it cannot be deleted, right? Yes, yeah. And I would say we should still uh, do it that way that we keep the last five versions plus all the others that may be blessed. Yeah. Because if you do it the other yeah. way around, then when you have like five very old uh, distributed versions that are protected, you would already delete the next version when you create a new one or the, the, the latest version when you create a new one and that's not what you expect. Yeah. So I would say just we keep these last five versions and all the protected ones. And then the meaning of keep repo versions equals five changes accordingly. Yeah, it does for sure. Yeah. But it does one it's thing. It's more useful this way. <laughs> very surprising. And we don't want to surprise our users. Yeah, because people could be creating versions all the time. My, my only question is, is being distributed the only way that a version should be blessed from being deleted? That's a good question. So I was thinking that we could create a method on um repo version to say whether or not it should be deleted and just go with distributed for now but then allow plugins to overwrite that because maybe plugins like have sub repos or something where they need to retain the repo version that's one option so in some plugins there should be a publication. So the repo is being distributed through a publication. For others, it can be distributed directly. Yeah. So, the so we would need to look at whether this repo version is directly distributed by distribution or if it has any publications and if those publications are being distributed. So yeah. David, you're saying that we should have a method on a repo version that basically can do this logic per plugin. Yeah, and I was imagining in core by default, it would just check to see if the repo version is distributed, but plugins can override it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to like go back one to one more point you made, David, I think independently of this what you said like having a way to discover which publications are currently distributed i think it's somehow possible but not very easily if i remember correctly that's a useful feature to have as well just like if i want to manually clean up can you pulp can you please give me a list of all the publications that aren't actually distributed because some you can definitely design a workflow where you just collect those forever and never delete them and then they start taking up space and they're sort of hard to find i'm not yeah. sure how hard they are to find yeah i agree because actually when we look at like publications we can't tell which ones are currently being distributed so that would be helpful i think if I'm not mistaken, we have a filter already implemented. Okay. okay. So maybe maybe I missed that or it wasn't there when I last looked at this problem. But I remember finding this difficult. Yeah. Because remember, publications can be set on distributions, but they could also be distributed uh, implicitly by the repository being set on distributions. So. 
think yeah, so you got to look for all distributions where the publications repository is set, where a publications repository, well, where the publication is set. Yeah. Well, the distribution is pointing to a repository. It's always distributing the latest version, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that one will never be deleted by that method, at least. Wait, how is this po possible if a, uh, sorry, distribution publication, which is which distribution is the thing I see in the browser, right? It, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So if a distribution is set to a repository and it just tries to distribute the latest repo version, but what the if there's like- The publication of that. Okay, just the latest publication, whatever that is. Because like you could have two publications from the same repo version, right? That's right. So it's just the believe... newest, whatever the newest publication from that repository is, even if it's an old version. That's uh... that's a good question. <laughs> and look, we are looking at the handler code. And if there's not a publication, it looks for by pulp created. Yeah. Uh, latest repository version and then the publication for the latest repository version. The latest publication for the latest repository version. What if so there's two or the latest? Okay, the latest. Yeah, okay. I I got what you said. Wait, it's the latest publication for the repository, right? For the latest version of the repository. What if it's not published at all, that repository version? Uh, it's going to not find it. I mean, right. it's going to pass and it's going to look for a publication after that. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. But it seems like the consensus is that in general, the feature David is proposing does make sense. Totally. <laughs> to, to not not delete things that people still have distributed by an automatic process because that is sort of hard to grok if you're not really deeply in the code. Yeah, and like the user no. who reported this said that this was unexpected. And I kind of agree that it's deleting distributed publications. Yeah, if I if I'm currently serving something with my pulp instance, and I've I've set up some things in the background to 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 clean up old stuff, and suddenly it deletes the stuff I'm still distributing, I would agree that that's just not obvious that that should ever be happen and probably shouldn't happen. You, you and then the logic the logical conclusion is that the meaning of retain repo versions has to change because you could have seven, like you could set it to five and then have seven of them distributed and then you have more than five. Well, it tells you that you protect five and maybe it protects more. <laughs> so it's basically at least five. But um, you just pointed very specifically at an automatic process. What's What about when the user says, I want to remove this version and it's still distributed? Is that a reason not to let him? Well, I mean, in that case, he could just uh, create a manual delete call. No? That's, a, that's an explicit desire. I'm, but like, maybe I'm not aware that I'm still serving it. So maybe it should throw an error and I should delete the other thing first. Or I should have a force flag to, then I get the error the first time and then go like, oh, this is still distributed oh, but I really do want to delete it and just cascade away or something, then I can set the force flag. I don't know, it's one function. Basically, this is exactly what we discussed for remotes in the past, and we weren't able to find any conclusion for that. Because when you are deleting remotes, there might be some remote artifacts referencing that remote. And then when the content is downloaded on demand, when a user requests it, there is basically no source for downloading the content. So again, we were discussing whether to introduce the force flag for removing remotes or whether to 
give an error message to user and we really couldn't reach a consensus around that. So I hear this is basically the same problem here. I do agree to some extent, but the remote really is hooked up to a thousand of content units maybe. And I don't see it at that level with the um, publications and distributions. You probably need to delete two distributions and then you can delete your repository version. And I see that, yeah, it's, it's about the same technology of deleting, but in the end, semantically, I, I see this is very different. Yeah, I'm fine with tracing an error in this case. Like we will return an error message like, hey user, let's remove this distribution first, and then you can remove the protected repository version. And that's all. Another yeah. caveat is that the delete call doesn't accept any any data. So you can't pass any yep. force flag to it. And this is their incarnation of this problem in, in different situations. Like imagine you have a repository, two users have the full access to it and each of the user distributes it with different distribution and one of the users just decide to delete this repo and another user is unhappy because his distribution starts to point to null so how do we solve this well you can use query parameters right and you are issuing a delete call and at the end of the url you will just has the forced query parameter, I think. Well, if if you go with the hard, just throw an error until you've deleted all the uh, just publications or whatever. Publication. I always mix up publication distribution. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you delete up all the other objects have to delete them first before you can delete your repository version if you just raise an hard error then it, then you don't need a force flag then it just you can't do it until you've deleted the other things first that's yeah, what i heard matthias say yeah and technically you don't even need to delete the distribution you just unset the repository or publication from the distribution then you can delete it so yeah, that, that's another option we have discussed, but going back to the remote and the artifacts, you would need to really be keen on finding all the content, you know, delete that content. And only after that, you would be able to delete that remote or because I'm not that big fan to selectively apply this rule on objects. If we go with this rule, we apply it everywhere with the changing the, I don't know, set now to protect. Yeah, so I'm a little less, like we don't delete repository versions. Um, we don't really deal with them. So I'm hoping just to work on the repo uh, version retention code initially, submit a PR for that, and then maybe file a separate issue or what have you to also protect repo versions from manual deletion i guess so do we have a consensus on at least that point that the repo retention like the the meaning of repo retention should change to not delete distributed versions yeah with that on board okay cool that sounds good to me. I, I feel like I could update this issue with what our consensus is and then probably get a PR open at some point. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd like to sum it up as we only add more protection to the repository versions in the retain feature first, which is the minimum step. Then we have the opportunity to think again about protecting repository versions against manual deletion. Well, that would be a separate group, right? Which we can decide on later. Yeah. And 
if we say we go that way and then someone says, yeah, but I really, really, really want to delete, then we can think about the fourth flag as a third iteration of the process. That sounds good to me. And we'll see how far we get. <laughs> cool, yeah. Perfect. Cool, that's all I had for this topic. I don't know if there's anything else. Last call. Hey, cool. Thanks, guys. I will go ahead. Repeat, repeat the solution real quick so I can take notes. Okay, yeah. So uh, for this issue, um, we'll protect distributed repo versions from automatic deletion when retained repo versions is set. Gotcha. Right, yeah. I was thinking you would do. Thank. Uh, I, sounds good. Cool. Great. Thank you very much, guys, for the discussion. I'll stop the recording.